Every year, billions of books are published worldwide, finding their way into libraries, classrooms, and homes. More than just pages of paper, a book is a carefully engineered structure of knowledge designed to preserve ideas and memories across generations. A book begins with wood pulp, cellulose fibers, and printing ink. These seemingly rough materials must pass through a series of precise processes. Fiber treatment, paper formation, printing, drying, trimming, and binding. So how do fragile sheets of paper come together to form a complete book? Strong enough to be opened and read thousands of times. In this video, we trace that entire journey from raw materials to the moment knowledge is finally bound into its finished form. Books emerged as a tool for preserving knowledge beyond human memory. From clay tablets and bamboo slips to papyrus, each form reflected the technological level of its era. The invention of paper in the second century made books lighter, cheaper, and easier to reproduce. However, the decisive turning point came in the 15th century when Gutenberg's printing press enabled mass production in a short period of time, transforming books from rare objects into the foundation of modern education and science. Today, the world publishes more than 2.2 million book titles every year, within a market valued at approximately $120 billion. Modern printing technology allows books to be produced rapidly and in a wide range of formats. At the same time, e-books and audiobooks account for roughly 20 to 25% of total revenue in many developed countries, significantly expanding access to knowledge. Despite the rise of digital formats, printed books remain the physical backbone of knowledge, preserving information in a form that is stable, enduring, and independent of screens or software. The opening stage of the entire paper production process begins in the forest, where only trees cultivated specifically for the paper industry are selected for harvesting. Species such as eucalyptus, pine, and acacia are prioritized once they reach the appropriate age, with straight trunks, minimal branching, and uniform fiber structure. These characteristics are essential for producing cellulose fibers with consistent length, a key factor that determines the strength and smoothness of the finished paper. Selection is based not only on tree age, but also on fiber quality, ensuring that every log delivered to the mill has a stable internal structure, flexible fibers, and sufficient resilience to withstand the chemical and mechanical processes that follow. Across plantation forest slopes, harvesting crews fell each pre-marked tree in sequence. Industrial chainsaws operate with low vibration to produce clean cuts, minimizing internal fiber damage within the trunk. Trees are felled along carefully calculated directions to prevent impact damage, then debranched and cut into standardized log lengths suitable for transport and pulp processing. These logs are loaded onto specialized vehicles equipped with secure gripping systems that reduce vibration and impact during transit. Throughout the journey to the mill, moisture and temperature conditions are carefully managed to preserve the integrity of the cellulose fibers. Upon arrival, the wood is stacked in storage yards not only for holding, but also for material stabilization. Misting systems are used periodically to maintain uniform moisture between the core and surface preventing excessive drying, fiber cracking, or quality degradation before the logs enter the debarking and pulping stages. Once inside the mill, the logs designated for paper production are fed into industrial wood chippers. These machines use hardened alloy steel blades mounted on high-speed rotating discs or drums to cut the logs into wood chips with tightly controlled shape and thickness. The objective of this stage is not to grind the wood into small fragments, but to produce chips of uniform size that are large enough to preserve the full length of the cellulose fibers inside. Uh, blade cutting angles, rotational speed, and applied pressure are precisely calculated to minimize fiber cracking, since damaged fibers directly reduce the mechanical strength of the finished paper. During operation, sensors continuously monitor chip thickness and length, allowing the cutting system to adjust in real time. The result is a steady flow of wood chips with stable structure, clean-cut surfaces, and retained natural moisture, creating an ideal material foundation for the pulp processing stage that follows. After chipping, 
The wood chips are sent into a screening system for precise size classification. Multi-stage vibrating screens or rotary screens continuously separate the chips by thickness and length. Oversized pieces are retained for reprocessing, while undersized fragments and fines are removed to prevent damage to the cellulose fiber structure. Only chips with uniform dimensions are allowed to pass through, ensuring material consistency for the subsequent processing stages. At the same time, chip moisture is carefully controlled through light drying or moisture stabilization. Unlike complete drying, the objective here is to bring the moisture content of the chips to a uniform level while preserving most of the natural water within the wood fibers. Warm air or circulating airflow is used to reduce surface moisture, preventing localized areas that are excessively wet or overly dry. By balancing both chip size and moisture at this stage, the wood chips maintain a stable fiber structure, minimizing quality fluctuations throughout the entire paper production line. Once the wood chips have been stabilized in size and moisture, they are fed into sealed industrial digesters, where the most critical transformation in paper production takes place. Inside these vessels, the chips are processed under high temperature and pressure in a chemical solution, most commonly using the craft process. This solution is designed to break down lignin, the natural binding agent that holds wood fibers tightly together, while preserving the integrity of the cellulose structure. The cooking process is tightly controlled in terms of time, temperature, and chemical concentration to ensure that lignin is removed to the correct extent, avoiding excessive degradation or shortening of the cellulose fibers. Throughout the cycle, sensor systems continuously monitor internal reactions, adjusting pressure and heat to maintain stable conditions. When the process is complete, the original wood chips no longer exist as solid pieces, but are converted into a suspension of separated cellulose fibers dispersed in liquid, forming raw pulp with mechanical properties, well-suited for printing and publishing applications. After the cooking process is complete, the raw pulp mixture containing cellulose fibers is passed through a multi-stage washing system to remove dissolved lignin and residual chemicals. These washing units use countercurrent circulating water, allowing impurities to be separated from the fibers without compromising the cellulose structure. The objective of this stage is to reduce the concentration of dissolved substances in the pulp while preserving fiber length and flexibility. The liquid separated during washing, commonly known as black liquor, is not discarded. Instead, it is collected and treated through evaporation systems and recovery boilers. In this process, water is gradually removed, organic components are burned to generate energy, and inorganic compounds are recovered and converted back into fresh cooking chemicals. Through this closed-loop system, the mill reduces chemical consumption while limiting environmental emissions. The result is a cleaner, more chemically stable pulp stream, ready to meet the high quality requirements of printing and book paper production. The fully cleaned pulp is then heavily diluted with water, forming a thin suspension in which cellulose fibers are evenly dispersed and no longer clumped together. The high water ratio is not intended to weaken the material, but to give the fibers sufficient space to move, rotate, and self-align before bonding. This suspension is precisely directed into the paper machine, where it is spread into a continuous thin layer onto a rapidly moving metal forming screen. As soon as the slurry contacts the mesh, water begins to drain downward through gravity and vacuum systems, while cellulose fibers gradually collide, overlap, and interlock, forming the primary fiber network of the paper sheet. The newly formed sheet, still very wet and fragile, continues through a press section composed of multiple large compression rollers. Mechanical pressure at this stage removes additional water while forcing fibers closer together, increasing contact points and hydrogen bonding between them. The sheet then passes through a series of heated drying cylinders, where temperature is carefully controlled to allow moisture to evaporate gradually without causing sudden fiber shrinkage. By the time the paper exits the drying system, it reaches a stable moisture level with a flat surface, uniform thickness, and a fiber structure strong enough to exist as a durable medium for writing, printing, and long-term knowledge preservation.
After drying, the paper passes through the calendaring system to smooth the surface and stabilize thickness. Press rollers apply carefully controlled pressure to compress the cellulose fiber network, reducing microscopic roughness while preserving the friction needed for writing and printing. This stage directly determines the tactile feel of the paper and its ability to hold ink properly. Once calendaring is complete, the continuous paper web is guided into the winding section, where it is rolled into large jumbo reels under tightly controlled tension. Winding helps maintain structural stability, making the paper easier to store, transport, and handle in subsequent processing stages. After being wound and cut to size, the paper is fed into the industrial printing line, where content begins to appear with precision and consistency across thousands of copies. The most widely used technology at this stage is offset printing, the standard of modern publishing. In this system, images and text are first transferred onto metal printing plates through a pre-press imaging process. When the press is running, ink adheres to the image areas on the plate, then transfers onto a flexible rubber blanket before being pressed onto the paper. This indirect printing method allows ink to spread more evenly, produces sharp and stable text, and reduces direct friction, enabling the press to operate continuously at high speed without damaging the paper surface. Throughout the printing process, parameters such as ink viscosity, water balance, printing pressure, and the paper's ink absorption are precisely controlled to prevent smearing, color deviation, or text distortion. Book paper is typically printed on large sheets, each containing multiple pages arranged in a technical layout that minimizes errors during folding and binding. As soon as the sheets exit the press, the ink begins to stabilize on the paper surface, creating clear contrast and ensuring that the content can be read comfortably over long periods without causing eye strain. Book pages are printed on large sheets, with multiple pages arranged in a precise technical order on each sheet. After printing, these sheets are stacked into sets and fed into industrial trimming machines to cut and clean the edges. This cutting stage removes excess paper, standardizes the dimensions of each set, and ensures straight, uniform edges before the material moves on to the binding process. After trimming and proper sequencing, the paper sections are fed into the spine processing unit. First, the spine is folded and pressed along the central axis to define the book's opening direction and ensure accurate page alignment. The spine surface is then lightly roughened to increase adhesion before a specialized hot melt adhesive is applied evenly along the entire length of the spine. While the adhesive is still hot, the paper block is firmly compressed, allowing the glue to penetrate deep into the page edges and bind the sheets into a single unified block. This process requires precise control of temperature, adhesive volume, and pressing force. Too little adhesive weakens the spine and leads to separation, while excessive glue makes the spine rigid and difficult to open. Once the adhesive cools and stabilizes, the book spine becomes strong enough to hold the full content securely, while still allowing the book to open relatively flat during use. Once the spine has been secured and the adhesive has fully stabilized, the book block is fed into the cover attaching machine. The pre-cut and pre-scored cover is precisely aligned with the spine, then pressed firmly onto the book block using a system of pressure rollers. A specialized adhesive ensures that the cover bonds evenly to the spine as well as to the front and back edges of the book block, creating a connection strong enough to withstand repeated opening and handling. This stage not only keeps the pages firmly fixed inside the book, but also defines the external shape, flatness, and overall durability of the finished volume before it moves on to the final finishing steps. After cover attachment is complete and the book shape has stabilized, the finished volumes move into the packaging area. Here the books are aligned neatly and lightly pressed to ensure that the cover and spine retain their correct form during storage. Depending on distribution requirements, the books may be wrapped in a thin protective film or protective paper to reduce exposure to scratches, dust, and environmental moisture. The books are then placed into cardboard cartons in fixed quantities, optimizing space while minimizing movement during transport. Each carton is securely sealed and arranged onto pallets, allowing efficient handling with forklifts. 
At this stage, the book has fully exited the production line, carrying its final physical form and ready to enter the broader network of warehousing, transportation, and distribution. From tree trunks grown in industrial plantations, a book begins its journey as raw material, carrying no visible trace of knowledge. Through harvesting, fiber processing, paper making, printing, and binding, each stage quietly shapes the quality of every single page. Massive paper rolls gradually become precisely printed sheets, then are joined into a unified form that a reader can finally hold in their hands. When a book leaves the factory, it is not merely the product of machines and industrial systems, but a meeting point between material and ideas, where knowledge is preserved in a durable and tangible form. If you found this journey fascinating, leave a like, share the video, and tell us in the comments which book changed the way you see the world.